All right, folks, you're very welcome to this video where I'm going to demonstrate to you how it is I set valve spring seat height. This video came about as a result of me putting up a photograph on my Instagram feed uh, a couple of days ago of a cylinder head like this over at the machine center and I said I was setting valve spring seat height. I got a few questions uh, that came by direct message asking me what it was, how I was doing it and why I did it and I decided this is as good a time as any to shoot a tech video. Let me know if this video is of any interest to any of you guys or if you find it interesting and maybe I'll try and shoot another few videos like this uh, in the coming weeks and months. So valve spring seat height, what is it? So in an A-series engine on pretty much any comb internal combustion engine, you're gonna have a thing called a valve spring. This is a, a double valve spring, which we use here uh, in our performance cylinder heads. Uh, and uh, it sits in a valve spring seat. Okay, so it sits there in a valve spring seat. A top cap goes on there and the spring's job is to keep the valve closed. There's a critical dimension between the base of this valve spring seat here and the underside of the valve cap. That dimension is how much the spring is compressed in its natural state, i.e. when there's no tension from the camshaft through the push rods. Any good valve spring manufacturer will give you what that dimension should be, depending on the valve loading required by your camshaft manufacturer. In order for us to turn out one of these cylinder heads that is of sufficient quality that I'm happy to put my name to it, uh, I must get these uh, spring seats set to a certain tension. What I found over the years working on these engines is that these spring seat heights can be varied as much as over a millimeter across a cylinder head and some low, some high and no rhyme or reason to what way it is. So an effort in combating that is I came up with a way of machining these valve seats myself here in my milling machine to get that to a height that was sufficient for me so I could add some shims in here and actually set a really accurate uh, valve spring seat height. So what I want to do is I want to accurately set the distance between the surface here of the cylinder head and the top of this valve spring seat height and I want to set it as accurately as possible and um, as close as possible to each other across this cylinder head. The first step in that is going to be doing some measuring but before we do that it's important just to make sure that we have a flat surface here. This is a machined surface and it would be machined in the factory very similar to these valve guides but it, it has had some years on an engine and has had some years working around the place so uh, just to make sure that we don't have any uh, bits of junk or bits of um, maybe corrosion what we're going to do is just simply run a uh, stone across this in the head and that stone is just going to pick up any kind of little burrs or imperfections we're not trying to machine the top of the head in any way with this stone we're just simply trying to uh, take out any imperfections. All right, so it's just a simple matter of just rubbing the stone across the top of the head and just taking out any burrs or maybe any imperfections that might be there. All right. Okay, folks, so we're back over here now at the uh, cylinder head and I just r lightly stoned off the top of the cylinder head uh, with the oil stone just to make sure that any burrs or imperfections on this surface have been taken off. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of these uh, valve spring seats here uh, with this dial indicator tester that I made. It's a very simple apparatus, it's just a, a digital dial indicator set across an aluminium straight edge which I've stoned flat uh, and it's just mounted here with a bit of treaded rod. So it's a very simple apparatus, but can give you very repeatable, accurate, accurate measurements of uh, this particular dimension. So, you know, no big deal, no big expense, but accurate repeatability. So let's just have a little look at some of these. So I have this set to what should be the standard for a mini. Uh, so off camera, I've tested this for, for what should be the standard, all right? And I just want to show you exactly what we're gonna come up with here. So if we just put this on here, you can see uh, this one is uh, just over 0.3 millimeters too high. So that, that one's too high. Move on and have a little look at this one here. This one's nearly 4.3, 0.38, nearly four. So almost a half a millimeter wrong there. 
this one 0 0.31 okay so what that i suppose is demonstrating to us there is just the indifference across the top of the cylinder head we have over uh, 0 0.2 0 0.3 just in those ones alone all right just to give you a look guys at some of the uh, discrepancies here and hopefully you can make out this indicator here uh, but i'll read the numbers off to you anyway so this one is 0.4 so that is 0.4 half a millimeter effectively higher than the factory setting uh, let's look down here to one of the seats that i've done and i now have it at the factory setting there so hopefully you can see that if i just uh, bring it into the indicator view uh, there we are at zero so that's the factory setting that's the height it should be at um, we will accept anywhere here of uh, 0.1 would be fine we can make that up easily with 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 valves spring seat shims so there's no real worry there but we can't deal with numbers like this uh, where we have tolerances out by half a millimeter that is something that needs to be machined the second thing to note here is is that i've set this indicator at the factory height which is the height that these were supposed to be machined at from the factory okay guys uh we're now moving on to the process of how are we going to set these seat height accurately so what we have now is we have a cutter installed here in the milling head this cutter is a homemade cutter that i made myself it's a bit of uh, tooling that i made up oh many years ago for cutting these uh, valve spring seats maybe that's a, another video uh, down the road how to make one of these cutters they're very simple uh, just a mild steel rod with a uh, pilot turned on the end of it and a piece of high speed uh, steel machined to give me the right geometry for this valve seat anyway what I have here is I have a dial indicator gauge set up and if I bring down the cutter now till it comes in contact with the uh, valve seat uh, what I want you to see is, is that the dial indicator gauge now is reading zero. This valve spring seat we measured at 0.3 too high in other words it was 0.3 above the factory setting. I know uh, from the measuring of the particular valve spring I'm going to use uh, that what I actually need this to be is 0.2 millimeters below the factory setting. So we need to machine a further 0.3 out of, so off 0.3 out of this valve uh, spring seat and then machine on another uh, 0.2 of a millimeter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually machine it on here to 0.23 and then that will uh, leave us at the right height. We can then set that at zero here in the dial indicator gauge and then it should just be simply a process of moving across the cylinder head working along each individual uh, valve spring seat and bringing it down until this dial indicator gauge reads zero and then we should have valve seats that are all uh, within uh, 0.05 of a millimeter. So let's uh, fire up the milling machine here. So now the cutter is turning. So I'm gonna bring the cutter down and you'll hear it just uh, starting to graze the top of the material. Uh, what you'll see here is the cutter uh, bobbing. That's perfectly normal. This is a very accurate indicator. So it's just picking up the uh, cutting action of the cutter. If I bring it down, now the cutter is just come into contact with the cylinder head and we're gonna start actually cutting. So by adding a little bit of cutting pressure, now the cutter is starting to cut. There's 0 0.1, there's 0 0.2, 0 0.23, okay. Uh, and we can see down here uh, the material that the valve seat cutter, or the valve spring seat cutter has removed. Um, before we go any further here, we'll pull back the cylinder head uh, on the carriage here, and we'll take a quick measurement to see whether we're right or wrong. When we have this set exactly where we want it, then we can just work our way across the cylinder head very happily. Okay, so we're very happy with that guys. If we bring the indicator in here and we, we check our measurement, we're sitting in right there at uh, 0 0.19, 0 0.2, all right? So the indicator's just settled in there now at 0 0.2. So that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be 0 0.2 millimeters below the original factory seat height. So I have a zero now. I'm going to show you how I set the zero up here on the dial indicator gauge up on the milling machine. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, we bring uh, the milling cutter uh, back over uh, by uh, wheeling the carriage over. We're bringing down our cutter. Just before we put this cutter into the cylinder head, I like to put a little dab of oil 
just on the pilot there. The pilot is running in uh, what is the uh, valve guide boss. Uh, this is a press fit measurement that holds the valve guide tightly. We don't want to change that dimension in any way whatsoever. So it's important that we run uh, oil and a clearance here to stop that. So I'm gonna start the machine again. We're going to watch our dial indicator here and we're going to bring it down until it just starts to cut on this cylinder head. And it's just coming up there to cutting, which means we can set that now at our zero. Okay, so we set that at our zero. You'll see that there is a little bit of movement. This is a tense indicator, so it is going to one one hundredth of a millimeter, an accuracy that in fairness is much greater than what we need for this particular task. Uh, it just happens to be a nice accurate indicator that I like to use for this particular task. So we're at zero there, we know that's our, our, our cutting height. Uh, we can now move on to another one of our valve guide uh, bosses and we can machine it. So let's move over to this one here. Uh, just beside that one. We'll line up our pilot. The cylinder head is trammed in with the uh, milling machine, so all I have to do is traverse the milling table and I line up perfectly with my pilot each time. Another little dab of oil there just to make sure we're running lovely and free, which we are in that uh, valve dive boss. So I want you just to hear, as I bring the cutter down, you can hear a little uh, small cutting sound. What that actually is, is this valve guide boss here, or this valve spring boss here being centralized. Again, another problem with these BLA series engines is those bosses can be as much as a couple of thousand out of line. So you can hear it uh, bringing that into line there. And now it's just going to start cutting. Have a look at the indicator here. 0.43 millimeters off of the uh, height we had set here which if you remember back to when we were checking with the dial indicator gauge this one here was 0.29 or around that off of the original boss height so we're getting accuracy across our measurements which tells us that we are very confident to go ahead and bring this cut to zero so that's what we're going to do now so you can hear the cutting taking place you should see the material is coming off and the dial indicator gauge is moving nice and quickly uh, towards that cutting Right, another machine clutch just kicked in there. We just pull the cutter back up again and we bring it back into action. All right, here it comes. See it coming down here. And we're at our zero now. So we're just letting the cut finish and we're stabilizing back at our zero, which is exactly where we were when we were on this bus. As said, another nice simple process now. We can move on to our next valve guide boss by tramming the, the milling machine over further on the cross slide. Slowly bringing it until we feel that valve guide line up. Completely frictionless fit here. Add our little drop of oil to the pilot. Now the oil is not for cutting. These are cast, grey cast iron cylinder heads. There's no need for oil for cutting them. It's just simply to allow the pilot run smooth. You seen earlier on the clutch kicking in while we were cutting this one. I have a clutch set up in this machine, so if the machine winds up at all or um, picks up on the cast iron, it slips the head rather than galling up and damaging the cylinder head. So that's just a little safety feature that kicks in uh, from me being a little bit aggressive on my feet here. So looking at this again, this one's coming in there at about 0.4 or just under. So we're going to bring our cut in. Cut there nicely now. There's that clutch kicking in again. Okay, here's the cut coming in. Okay, guys, so we have all of our valve spring seat heights machined now, and we want to just go across and check. So we're shooting here for about 0.5. 0 0.05, should I say? 0 0.05. That's a clearance which allows me to easily uh, shim out any discrepancies as I'm setting the valve spring seat uh, 
height loads uh, for the valves later on. Uh, I have shims from 0.5 up to a millimeter, so I can easily uh, deal with 0.5 across the cylinder head. And it's a reasonable accuracy to try and shoot for on uh, a piece of old cast iron like this. So let's just get a little look here uh, on the camera. So uh, our gauge here on this seat is given me can we see let it just adjust let it settle down okay so we've point two there what have we got on this one point one there point two there and we've point one there so i'd be very very happy with that we have a discrepancy of uh, less than 0.05 of a millimeter across uh, a cylinder head of this uh, length and obviously of this age so that's a clearance that we can easily work with we are now 0 0.25 uh, or 0 0.2 uh, below the original factory setting for the cylinder head which i know with these um 280 pound double valve springs from mini spares is a really good um height to be at it means that i have a little bit of room here to play with a shim and, and get this valve set height perfectly I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for that video guys and um, hopefully uh, it was somewhat informative and gave you some uh, of, uh, insight into just exactly how it is that these spring heights are set. Uh, more than happy to make another uh, couple of short videos like this if people have an interest in this kind of information or if uh, people have interest in these kinds of videos. So um, see you on the next one hopefully. Cheers.